temp control is everything. When it comes to making the cleanest and best tasting beer, having control over fermentation temperature is the biggest thing you can do to improve your beer. But sometimes achieving proper temps can be a bit expensive. So I'm here to show you how to do it on a budget and get amazing results on your next homebrew. I'm Trent Mouchot and this is The Brew Show. Let's master fermentation temperature. As I've said before, when your fermentation temps are out of the acceptable range, you get all kinds of off flavors. This is probably the biggest beginner homebrew mistake because your starter kits don't emphasize the importance of controlling the temp. They usually say to just put it in a cool place, but that's not precise enough. Each yeast strain performs best at a certain range. Ales are typically around 67 degrees Fahrenheit and lagers prefer temps around 50 degrees. So how do you get to those ranges if you're just starting out? Don't worry, I've got a list of ways to do it without breaking the bank. I'll start with the most expensive option and work our way towards some free options for you penny pinchers. The basis for any solid fermentation temp control setup is a good thermometer. A simple stick thermometer works fine, and even a digital infrared one works, but you don't want to always be checking. That's why a digital temp controller is a great accessory to have in the home brewery. This device monitors the current temperature using a probe that you can either tape to the side of your fermenter or place inside a thermal well. Or you can just use good sanitation practices to put it right in. It also has an outlet plug, which you can plug all sorts of devices into, whether that's a fridge, a heat wrap, or some sort of cooling coil. It only runs power to that when the temps exceed your desired range. And today's partner, Digiten, has you covered on all that. The Digiten thermostat has a nice bright screen and displays the current temperature as well as set temp ranges for your desired fermentation temperature, a run and a stop temperature. So for example, if you want to ferment at 67F, you set the run temp to something like 68 and it will turn on the cooling coil or device until it cools down to your stop temp, which could be something like 65F, keeping your fermentation always around 67 degrees. I'm really enjoying using this controller and I like how quick the reaction time is for the temperature reading. And it has alarms to alert you if your temp gets too high or too low, but you can always turn that off if you want. Even if you don't use the power outlet functionality, the ability to just look and check your fermentation temp quickly is a key to success. You gotta know where you're at. If you're in the market for a temp controller like this one, I have a link down below for you to get your own. Thanks again to Digiten for the support. So with that, we can now talk about how to actually control the temperature. Option one, mini fridge firm chamber. The pricing on this one can vary because it depends on if you already have a mini fridge or if you can find one on Craigslist or offer up for cheap. It doesn't have to look pretty, it just needs to work. The idea is that you plug your fridge into the temp controller and place the probe inside the fridge. Or you can plug in a heat mat like this fermentation specific one to keep things warm. And just like that, you have a control chamber for fermenting any type of beer. Just make sure your fridge can fit your fermenter. It might be the most expensive option on this list, but if you can strike a good deal, it's definitely the easiest to set up and maintain. Number two, cooling coil. This one takes a few parts to pull together, but it's a great option for keeping your fermentation temps down. You might have seen expensive cooling coils or glycol setups on Instagram. This is a lot like that, but for a lot less. You'll need to source some materials from Anvil or other brewing hardware companies. But luckily, Anvil sells all their parts individually. The key components are the cooling coil itself and the stopper designed for the coil. Optionally, you can add in a thermal well for your temp probe. Then grab a cheap but good submersible pump. Anvil sells one, but it's a bit more expensive. Then you'll need some 3 16th inner diameter tubing, which you can get at any big box store for a couple bucks. And for this specific pump that I have, you'll need to get some adapter parts to convert to the 3 16th tubing. Also just another couple bucks. Assuming you have a cooler around, all you need to do is fill it up with ice water and drop the pump in. Put the cooling coil into your fermenter and drop the temp probe into your fermenter or attach it to the side. With the pump plugged into the temp controller, you can set when you want it to turn on to keep it cool. From there you just need to monitor the ice and replace when needed. This setup works great for lagering as well as long as you have lots of ice on hand. Number three, pressure fermentation. The great part about pressure fermentation is it really takes the temp control out of the picture. When fermenting under pressure, you can ferment a lot warmer and still get amazing results. It suppresses a bunch of off flavors, even for lager yeast at room temperature. 
What you'll need is to make a spunding valve that regulates the pressure, which should be set around 10 psi for the best results. The parts needed are a pressure gauge, a pressure valve that sets the pressure that it'll hold, and a pipe T fitting. Then hopefully you have a spare gas connect, a bit of tubing, and some hose clamps lying around. Assemble the parts as so, and boom, you're ready for pressure fermentation. The last part is to have the fermenter that can hold pressure, but if you're already kegging, you can just use a spare keg to do so for free. Just connect the spunning valve after pitching yeast, and set it to 10 psi once fermentation is underway. You can just set this at room temperature, and you're good to go. Number four, a heat wrap. It might be the case that you don't have to worry about keeping cold. Your issue is about keeping warm. In that case, a heat wrap is the way to go in my opinion. I've had this one from Northern Brewer for years, and it does a great job. If you don't have a firm chamber, then you can just tape it to your fermenter and plug it into your temp controller. It's as easy as that. If you have a green thumb, you may have a seedling heat map, which can also work for this in a pinch. Number five, swamp cooler. This one was a go-to for me and many others for years. Pricing can vary depending on if you can find a large bucket or container for cheap or if you already have one. The concept is pretty easy. Put your fermenter inside a larger bucket and fill it with water and ice or ice packs. Optionally, you can drape a towel over the fermenter so it's touching the water. This will wick up the cold water and give you even more cooling surface area. Adding a fan that blows on the outside will really improve how it works, exchanging and circulating that cool air around. Just replace the ice and ice packs as needed. Speaking of ice, I found that these ice bricks work much better in keeping temp down. They melt a lot slower and you don't have to replace them as often. Just fill up an old milk carton with water and stick it in the freezer. A day or so later, you just got a brick of ice for free. Speaking of free, as promised, here are some free ways to avoid or control the temperature issues. Number six, picking the right yeast. As I mentioned, different yeasts like different temperatures. So if you have no way to control the temperature of your living space, then pick a yeast that fits your zone. Kvike yeast is a great choice if you have hot conditions above 70 degrees. In fact, some Kvike strains can do well way up into the 90s and still give a fairly clean fermentation. You can use them to make all kinds of ales or even pseudologers, so give it a try. Number seven, brewing with the seasons. This one you probably have heard of, and that's because brewers have been using this strategy since the dawn of beer. Brewing ales that prefer warmer temps in the summer and lagers in the winter helps you minimize off-flavor production. You usually don't need any fancy equipment in that case to ferment your beer properly, but try to pick a spot in your home that keeps the temps somewhat consistent. Large temp swings can put your yeast into some stress, and still keep an eye on the thermometer in case weather changes in those shoulder seasons. So there you have it, a few options for you to get fermenting the right way. Let me know if you do anything different to regulate temps. I'm sure there's some other great hacks to keep things cool or warm when you need it. And if you have any questions, feel free to reach out to me on Instagram at The Brew Show or join us on the Discord. Thanks so much for watching. Cheers and happy brewing.